Hi, I'm Holly Thompson, and I'm going to do a picture book read aloud of The Wakame Gatherers. I'm Holly Thompson, the author who wrote the words, and Kazumi Wilds is the illustrator who did the pictures. In Japan, where I live, wakame is a very popular seaweed for eating, and in the winter months, fishing families will go out in boats and harvest the wakame from ropes where it grows out in the bay or cut it from the rocks on the shore where it grows naturally. They'll bring the boatload of wakame onto the beach and cut the long fronds from the base of the seaweed. Then they'll take the wakame and put it into a pot of boiling hot water and instantly it turns green. They take the green wakame out, put it into a bucket to cool it off, and then they take it over to clothespins and hang it for drying. And it hangs all day long in the beautiful sun and after a day in the sun, it will turn dark, green, and crispy, and it's ready for storing for a long time in your cupboard. You can see here there's wakame that they dried the day before in the front on the ground that's dark and very crispy. And in the background, you can see hanging from the blue clothespins the wakame that they just harvested that day. You can also go into the waves and try to get wakame yourself. Um, it's a little bit tricky. You have to know which one is wakame and which are the other seaweeds. But it's a very common thing to do where I live. And here's a big plate full of wakame just harvested and boiled and ready to eat. Here's a friend of ours who gathered her own wakame and she's boiled it and now she has a beautiful dish of wakame ready for all sorts of foods. So you might try wakame salad or wakame miso soup, put it in your rice, in with chicken, all sorts of ways that you can use wakame. So let's read the story. The Wakame Gatherers. My name is Nanami, Seven Seas, and I have two grandmothers from two different seas, Graham from Maine and Bachan, who lives with us here in Japan. Bachan's town, my town, rims a bay with sandy beaches and surfers. A streetcar runs between shops, houses, temples, and shrines, and near our home is a harbor where fishing families hang seaweed and set racks of fish to dry. Graham's town in Maine surrounds a bay with rocky shores, quiet with woods. I visit in summers and swim in the cold Atlantic. At low tide, the rocks are seaweed shaggy with green crabs hiding beneath. Sometimes we pull lobster traps in the bay and seals poke their heads up to study us. Each spring, as warm winds are blowing, Bachan likes to gather wakame seaweed. And this year, when Graham arrives for a visit during March break, Bachan asks Graham and me to help. Graham likes adventures, but I'm not so sure. This will be my first time out alone with Graham and Bachan, and I will be the only translator. Bachan wakes us early one morning. She braids my hair with her fast fingers, then goes out to the shed. Wakame doesn't just grow on rocks on the sea floor, I tell Graham as we eat breakfast, rice, and soup. It grows on ropes, the fishermen set. Next year with my class, I'll help seed those ropes. Between slurps, I tell how seeds grow into fronds, then ropes are pulled up and the wakame harvested. Now the rope harvest is nearly finished, and fishermen take boats out to where wakame grows naturally and cut fronds with long poles and blades. Some washes ashore, and Bacha knows just where to go to find that wakame and fronds pounded loose by the waves. We'll get wet, Bachan says from the doorway, where she's gathered buckets, poles, plastic bags, and boots. I translate, and Graham gives a thumbs up. We set out into back lanes with the equipment. Along the main road, we squeeze against a building when a streetcar rolls by. Cars and motorbikes, people on bicycles, surfers with boards, all pull over close to storefronts. Daijoubu, are you okay? Bachan calls out. Daijoubu. Okay, Graham says. Daijobu is one Japanese word Graham has learned. The streetcar rumbles on and everyone moves again. We follow Bachan toward the harbor. Inside the breakwater, fishermen and women are hanging wakame. Steam rises from cauldrons. We stop to watch as men place long brown fronds into hot water. 
Like magic, the wakame instantly greens. They drop clumps of boiled wakame into buckets of cold water, lift cooled wakame onto, into a crate, then carry the loads like laundry to lines for clipping. Waving in the wind, the fronds look like silk scarves. Graham is fascinated. She's never gathered seaweed for eating. Why, asked Bachan, when I translate, in Maine you don't have seaweed? We do, Graham says. Irish moss, rockweed, ladderack, kelp. I can't translate these. So I tell Bachan, there's lots of seaweed, that I slip and fall on it when I explore the rocks near Graham's house. But why don't they eat it? Bachan asks. Mutainai, how wasteful. I ask Graham why they don't eat the shaggy seaweed in Maine. Well, rockweed's not so tasty, Graham says, but we cook lobsters in it, remember? I describe this to Bachan, how in summer we layer rockweed and lobsters in a pot over a fire on the beach. But Bachan asks, isn't there any seaweed they eat? Well, some people boil Irish moss for pudding, Graham says, and carrageenan is used in ice cream and other foods. But we don't usually eat seaweed as is, in soup or salad. Though, when I was a girl, my father chewed dulse, a red seaweed. Strange, Bachan says after I translate. Such cold water, you always tell me. Perfect for wakame and kombu. We cross the breakwater and head toward the beach, where surf slams on sand. Graham's amazed. In Maine, snow still spots the ground. Her bay is icy cold. Here, surfers ride waves, and the sun is strong. We set down our buckets and bags and pull on rain pants and boots. Bachan hands us each a pole with a hooked end and steps into the water. She pokes at waves, pulls up clumps of seaweed, then tosses them aside. Finally, she nabs a long strand and calls us over. This is wakame, she says. See the straight midrib? See the base, all curvy? I translate, and we follow Bachan into the bay. The waves crash hard against us. I use my pole, dipping down and pulling up when it feels heavy. I show Bachan. No, not wakame. I hook more. No, that's kajime, kajime, she says. No, kombu. Today we just want wakame. Graham is hooking seaweeds too, brown, red, and green. Then I point. Wakame, I shout. I untangle a frond wrapped around her legs, and we stuff it into her bag. Yatta, I say. Graham stares. Yatta, I repeat. Then I realize I'm speaking Japanese. We did it, I say. Soon I spy a curvy base in the waves and snag it with my bare hand. Then I leave my pole on the sand, enter the surf, and use my hands together, wakame. Without the pole, I'm fast, and my bag soon fills. After a while, I stand and watch the surf. Graham and Bachan are still gathering. In some waves, cresting against the light, schools of fish tumble. Sakana, I say. Fish, and my grandmother's smile. I turn to Bachan. Did you gather seaweed here when you were little? Of course, all kinds, right at this beach. I'm struck thinking of her as a young girl like me at this very spot. And did you use your hands to grab wakame, I ask? Of course. I translate for Graham, then shake my head like a dog. My braids whip back and forth. And did you do this with your hair? Bachan nods, and both grandmothers laugh. And did you have rain pants like these? Bachan stops, hooking seaweed, sighs long and eyes me. I translate my question for Graham. They both look at me funny, but I know I'm using the right language with the right grandmother. Then Bachan says, Nanami-chan, senso no toki datta wa yo? She nods for me to translate. I hesitate, then say, it was the war times. Graham nods knowingly. We came here often, Bachan says. I didn't have much clothing. I never had boots. Most day I wore a simple kimono that had been mended many times, or a hand-me-down dress, or monpe. We were always hungry, but we were lucky to have the sea for fish and seaweed. Then my brother and I were sent into the mountains to escape the bombs. We all stand still in the noisy surf, wakame flapping from our waist bags. I gaze at the sky, trying to imagine bombs raining. I know Bachan's mother died in a fire from those bombs. Tell me, Graham urges. So I take a deep breath 
and translate Bachan's words, understanding that when my grandmothers were my age, they were enemies, their countries bombing each other's people. I look from one grandmother to the other. I come from both of them, but I can't imagine parts of me at war with each other. I'm sorry, I finally say to one. Gomen nasai, I say to the other. Then Bachan surveys the waves, surf surfers, dog walkers, people hanging seaweed by the breakwater, and says, Nanami-chan, always protect this peace. I translate Bachan's words for Graham, and my chin trembles as my grandmothers nod and nod. Then Graham takes my hand and raises it high. Daijobu, she shouts. Bachan raises my other hand. Daijobu, she says, and we all yell into the waves. Daijobu, daijobu. Finally, we return to wakame collecting. Later that morning, Bachan sets our biggest pot on the stove. We boil the wakame to green just seconds, then remove it with tongs and plunge it into cold water. We save some wakame fresh in the refrigerator and take the rest to the laundry balcony to hang like socks. Bachan snips some ends with scissors, and as the day goes on, we take turns unfurling the shriveling fronds, fronds to the sun. By the time the sun sets over the far mountains, our wakame has turned from silken to brittle black green. The dried wakame will last for months in our cupboards. For dinner, we have fresh wakame with ponzu sauce, for breakfast, wakame soup, and for lunch, cucumber wakame salad. A week later, when we take Graham to the airport to return to Maine, she has our dried wakame, plus bags full brought from the, bought from the fishing families, tucked into her suitcase. In April, three letters arrive in a packet from Graham. My mother reads hers, pulls out summer tickets for our flights to Maine, and smiles. I know she's thinking of cold bays and quiet woods, seals. I open my letter. Dear Nanami, Yesterday I found wakame at a store in town, and bins of other dried seaweeds, too. Last night I made Hatsumi Bachan's wakame soup, and today I made wakame lobster sandwiches. Now I will try to learn how to use the other seaweeds the store has. Some are harvested from the next bay over, Alaria, kelp, even nori. Your bachan was right. Such cold water, perfect for seaweed. Enclosed is a present for her. Love, Graham. I ask my mother what Graham's letter to bachan says, but she tells me to take it to her. I hand the envelope to bachan in the back garden. Open it, I say. Bachan washes her hands, dries them on her apron, then lifts the flap with her thumb. She pulls out a piece of notepaper. I read, Dear Hatsumi, here are your tickets. I hope you can come. I will need some help from you and Nanami pulling lobster traps this summer. Love, Graham. I whoop with excitement. Bachan has never been to Maine. Translate, Bachan says impatiently. As I change Graham's words into Japanese, I pull the plane tickets from the envelope. Bachan touches the printed letters and numbers and blinks with tears. She's never been on an airplane. She's never left Japan. I take her hand and raise it into the air. Dai Jobu, I say. Dai Jobu. The end. And at the end of the book, after the story, there's more information about wakame, and there's a glossary of Japanese words and recipes. So you can make Bachan's miso soup, Nanami's wakame salad, and Graham's wakame lobster sandwiches. So thank you for joining me for this read aloud of the wakame gatherers and I hope you'll um, pick up a copy of the paperback edition when it is released soon. Take care. Bye-bye.